we're back for game number two of this best of two. DK and Team Dignitas in our first match of the day here at the preliminaries of the International 2013. Welcome in each and every one of you. No matter what corner of the globe you happen to call home, glad you're calling today. Team at least Dignitas calling our stream home today to if I can actually talk without sounding stupid, which is a challenge even on my best days. Nonetheless, to help me out with that, that's going to be Draskel. He's going to be educating us all with his analysis and insight. But game one, Draskel, Dignitas, really, I mean... Again, it wasn't that they played necessarily seconds, bad. It was more the DK, which just seemed to be one step ahead. We knew going in that their lineup, Five DK's lineup, needed. just had a much more offensive potential DK's if they got a lead. And bad. they just rolled up an early couple of towers into an early dead map in a very quick GG, the result from Dignitas. I really liked Dignitas draft, actually, because if you look at DK's team, it was so obvious for the reasons that you just mentioned that they wanted to apply early game pressure. So Ten the Doom pick was remaining. specifically because they knew that they were going to be taking Alchemist mid as soon as the Luna pick at the remaining. end. So they switched up the lanes a little bit because originally it was probably going to be sneaking going mid. But what that He's does is it eventually turns every single fight for a tower into a 4v5 because of Doom. Because Doom just takes out Burning two times in a row. He wasn't able to use his Eclipse. You can see what the game plan for Dignitas was. It's just like you said, not really Dignitas' best game, if I'm being frank. Yeah. There was a lot of <laughs> sloppy decision-making during yeah. that game. They got caught in a lot of situations. There was actually another time mid where RTK had just gotten a Splink Dagger. He makes a transition from top lane, basically at the Tier 2, to mid. And there's a ward on the high ground for Dignitas, and, he's, and now he still gets caught. I mean, I understand having a Blink Dagger is a bit difficult to avoid, but he was basically sitting at his Tier 1. He definitely mm -hmm. saw that. So I, I just feel as though maybe it was land jitters, maybe it was just the event itself, maybe it's because DK's, I don't know, a really, really good team and they're scary. But I didn't really feel like Dignitas showed what they're actually capable of, so I would hope, I would like to see them do a bit better in game number two. But DK, man, what else can you say other than, good lord, that was a well-executed game? Yeah, no joke, no joke. And you know, you do bring that up, and as we, we wait for the opening picks in band, to, to come together. To that is something worth mentioning about Dignitas that is something that they've been working on and something that has been a bit of a hurdle for them. Whenever they, you know, playing online, they have had stretches where they have seemed unbeatable. They've just been one of those teams that, um, depending on when you looked at their career over the last six months or so, they had these uh, these crazy good runs. They would just feel like this team that was solid all around. They had a very unique right. play style. But whenever they do get to land, they right. do tend to struggle. And most of their members will tell you that. They'll tell you whenever team they're together, like their boot camp was a little bit of a pick. struggle. And not to say that they hated each other or anything like that. So please don't take that away from it. But it's just a different environment. And some teams, depending on just the people, the personalities involved, can thrive in that. And Dignitas, not quite that team. They're a team with a lot of highly skilled players, but when it comes to playing live, they have been known to have, for lack of a better word, some jitters. So DK going to first pick the DK, follow it up with the Life Stealer. That's going to give away the Gyro team and the Bad Dignitas Rider to Team Dignitas. I'll tell you what, man, this is going to be a game that's going to have a lot, a lot of stuff going on early on. You don't see these front four picks this often together unless both teams just want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, blow for blow, Haymaker for Haymaker. Honestly, DK's draft, starting off with those two in particular, very, very difficult to stop those mm -hmm. two heroes, especially. The DK is most likely going to be going mid. Obviously, Lifestealer is going to be in some sort of farming role. For Dignitas, they take a Batrider. Not sure seconds, if it's going to be mid yet. Maybe. I know Sneaking does actually play Batrider for Dignitas, so it might be five mid, seconds, might be another offline like you saw maybe. ROTK do in game mm -hmm. number one. But more than anything, Dignitas, again, starting off with heroes Reserve that don't really time. give away lanes too much. Right. I think that's one maybe slight advantage that uh, Dignitas actually has in game two is that DK picking the Dragon Knight, he pretty much only has one place to go. It's very common, it's very similar to the Alchemist in last game. Like, we kind of figured he was going to be mid just because that's how he's run for DK, and you just go for the quick bottle. Same thing with Dragon Knight, except Dragon Knight is a bit different because he doesn't rush the mech. He goes for maybe a quick Shadow Blade shreds, and he's used as kind of an initiation tool, and one that's very difficult to actually punish because he's so ridiculously tanky. Oh, yeah. Not only that, but ever since the change to bad. rank two Dragon form, you can still push towers. The AOE is actually quite nice in a lot of cases during team fights. And like you said, both these teams so far, a lot of aggressive potential. I really want to see what Dignitas' game plan is, though, because it's going to be a lot of work to take DK out of their comfort zone. Something I'd like to see DK at least consider here. Whenever you see a Dragon Knight mid, the, you know, the big weakness in a Dragon Knight mid is very similar, as you had said, to an Alchemist, thing, except I would say that for the first six levels, he's actually more gankable. He's easier to pick off. He's easier to punish because he is a melee hero. His move speed is not the highest. He does tank up, but it does take those levels, the, the ranks into Dragon's Blood Essential, for him to really feel like a Dragon Knight should. And one nice way that you can try to keep some pressure off of a mid hero like that is by getting aggressive, running an offensive tri-lane, and of course, even 
got their life stealers nerf and the uh, the range DK nerf to open wounds to at level two. You know, two ranks in the open wounds. It doesn't feel that different. And at level three and level four, he's the same old life stealer he always was. And depending on how you level it, obviously that comes quicker, sooner rather than later in many circumstances. But you know, DK with a one game advantage already here. They've already got one down. They feel like they've got dignitas on the ropes. Remaining. We'd really like to see them go for the jugular, especially against the team like the bat. The, uh, what we see out of dignitas remaining. so far: a bat rider, a gyrocopter, two heroes that can begin to fight very early on. Reserve one nice time. way of dealing with the gyrocopters' uh, biggest damage dealing ability DK early on is magic immunity and life stealer, of course, with rage. Not too scared of rocket barrage uh, whenever he engages in so we'll see how they want to do it it's you know the whole Chen. offense yep there's the chin so looks like that went out the Team door nonetheless probably see some pressure but pick. as you mentioned the push potential out of the dk and the chin certainly going to be something being the toss has to remain aware of it's kind of the same feel as game number one here for dk except this time the chen's going to be the one making the mech and not the mid mm -hmm. so Right now, the other problem that Dignitas are going to be running into with their particular heroes right now, obviously they still have three more to pick, but there's two targets right now, actually three if you want to count Chen, that you want to lasso if remaining. you're Bat Rider. It's like, man, I want to go on the Life Stealer because he's going to just kill somebody instantly. Five the DK is going to be a problem because he has a very, very long duration stun, and if I don't lasso him, then I can get stunned, and then you want Reserve to stop Chen time. from being able to mech. So DK are basically picking a lineup that makes Bat Rider have very, very hard time deciding who he actually wants to try to punish right. for either positioning or during a teamfight engagement in general. And of course, Chen offsets the AoE burst damage that Gyrocopter is going to be able to do with DK's that uh, call down. Pick. And it looks like Dignitas' answer is going to be Eventual Spirit. So as kind of a supplement to Batrider, they're getting another hero who can deal with magic immunity or at least help his team position, which is basically what they need right now. Because if a Life Stealer and a Dragon Knight are leading the charge, the only way you're really going to recover from that is having mobility. And that's kind of what Eventual Spirit gives you just in a bit of a different way. Well, I really like something that jumped out immediately. Remaining. DK doing their homework. And of course, Razor not only played by Dignitas, but the Razor, a Razor pickup for Dignitas remaining. would have been brilliant. Being able to, to static link and try to sap some damage from one of those two Reserve big uh, damage dealers and Life Stealer and Dragon Knight. But with the Tinker pickup, I think what DK wants to do to here and what Dignitas, or excuse me, what DK wants to do here and what Dignitas, I'm sure, is aware of if you look at their bands. DK just has a team that's going to be able to overwhelm you. It is they're going to be able to swarm you. And now with that Tinker pickup, Tinker, one of those heroes that is highly valued because he can be played effectively in both an offensive and a defensive position, an early blink dagger, even more so, you know, even aside from the map control that he gives you, he can give you anyway, his ability to get completely out of control. Just the, the, the image already is scary when you look at, at, Digna, at uh, DK's line and being able to use Chin's entire army, remaining. let them lead off, tank the tower, have DK... Uh, doing damage in Elder Reserve Dragon time. form. Life Stealer waiting in the wings, ready to jump out as soon as possible with Tinker spamming March of the Machines. It's going to be very difficult for Dignitas, even with the initiation potential of a Batrider and Avenge, to fight outwards from their own tower into that. Pretty much, yeah. I, I don't really have much to add to that whole spiel, honestly. But what I do want to mention is that Dignitas are in a very similar position in game number one, and they're going to take the same exact DK's path. So they're taking a method that's basically like, okay, we know that you have three targets that we want to try to go for, mm -hmm. so we're going to pick a Doom to just eliminate one. Batrider goes for the other, and then Vengeful Spirit's there for backup if need be. So they have ways to initiate now. It's going to be a little bit different, though, because this time remaining. there's going to be probably a safe lane farming Tinker and maybe a Life Stealer Five Jungle. Maybe they want to change remaining. it up a bit. Regardless, the Tinker's going to be getting some farm. So we're going to have a chance to probably see Die Tinker, Reserve I would imagine, time. which is legendary status. So <laughs> for Dignitas, they still lack physical damage. I mean, even with a Ventral Spirit Team Aura, Dignitas who's going to kill the Life Stealer on that team unless he gets doomed and lassoed, which is something <laughs> that you really don't want to try to do. So Dignitas last DK's pick, it's kind of rough because they don't even have a secondary support. I honestly would say that DK has kind of just outpicked them at this point. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. And, I, you know... I, I the the first game you know we talked about how thin the lineup felt and we we covered that but yeah this is a totally different idea here it's the same kind of problem but this time it's a little bit more pronounced DK just has answers to everything Dignitas has or more to the point Dig Dignitas has too many questions to answer of their own like you said who do you lasso how do you position the venge who's doom gonna doom how do you account for dealing damage Five to the life stealer the remaining. physical damage off of gyrocopter for example is not gonna get out of control until later in the game so who kills the dragon knight you just don't have a lot of Team damage Dignitas coming out that you can rely on you've got magic damage in the form of rocket barrage and cooldown that's grand uh, magic missiles not a not a terrible 
uh, early game nuke. But for the most part, I just and now with the, the Bane pickup, Bane being able to enfeeble a gyro copter, being able to, of course, fiend script the gyro or whatever hero they want. I just feel like DK, no matter what we can point at that D- Dignitas has, we can say, and yeah, I mean, Bane hard counters the Enigma, so they just picked the Enigma D- into the Bane DK's to begin with. To but um, but yeah, it's going to be rough going. Not to, knock, to, not to take Dignitas out of it. You and I have been casting this team, and as you said, you know them. We have seen them take lineups like this a success, but it's going to be even more of a challenge now in Game 2. I do love their last pick, though. Dignitas ending it up with an Enigma, that is exactly what they needed. They needed something that would force DK's attention to the point where they have to use disables on the Enigma. Well, unfortunately for DK, the only method they have disabling besides Super is Bane. And Bane is probably going to be hard-pressed to do much of anything because now that they see that Bane's really the only one who can stop black holes, the priority of targets has pretty much changed. Because if Wei 2 can get a decent black hole off into a call down, they have a decent amount of AoE damage that they can actually do, and I feel like they could potentially take fights now. The problem is, I feel like DK's laning phase is going to be a little bit stronger. So Prepare we'll have to see battle. how Dignitas wants to try to do this. Obviously, the Gyrocopter is going to be in a farming role. They're probably going to be sending that Doom uh, mid for the second time in a row. But at the moment, he's actually bottom. So we'll see what the choice is actually going to be. But if DK get any momentum, yep. it's going to be so hard to stop. It's very similar to game number one. So Dignitas, they can't afford to make the same early game mistakes. You can't give DK any picks. And if you can make it to the mid game relatively unscathed, I would honestly say that Dignitas have a good shot here. DK looking to get something going early on. And we're going to have two wandering off by themselves. That's going to be Doom. And AUI spotting, Burning, will immediately withdraw to the safety and succor of his teammates. And DK pursuing them out. They're getting some wards down. And we'll see if they do, or how they do want to try to, uh, if they do want to try to really put the pressure on early, if they're just going to be confident to sit back and just get their heroes the items that they need. For now, Burning hanging around bottom. QQQ, of course, going to head his way into his own jungle, ROTK, making his way up there. And yeah, I'm waiting to see how the laning phase is going to end up working out. Um, Burning, obviously, going to be looking to farm at some point, but as of right now, a little bit scattered. How about we just talk about who's playing on who? Way too sexy. He'll be handling the big purple guy this time. That'll be Enigma. Vengeful Spirit, going to be played by Fog. Doom, going to be handled by AUI the once again. The Bad Rider, played by Universe this time around. And Sneaking will be taking the Gyrocopter mid. We'll talk a little bit about that decision coming up in a moment. Burning, going to be on the Life Stealer. He's actually hanging out down in the off lane for the moment. We're going to have Super setting up shop in mid on the Dragon Knight. ROTK playing on the Tinker with QQQ. Going to be doing his thing with the Holy Knight here in the jungle. Chen, his hero, and MMY. Spots out a haste rune. He's playing on the other purple guy on the map. That'll be Bane. I'm a bit disappointed, actually, that we're not going to see Die Tinker. But of course, RTK is still a really good player in his own right. So I'm sure it's going to be just fine. I like the choice to the Gyrocopter mid here. It makes it so Super doesn't just have a free lane. And eventually, once um, Super gets a couple of levels, he'll be able to recover. And then why with a haste, though, mid? Here we go. Nightmare's there. Dragon Tail is skilled. And there it is to follow it up. QQQ arrives just in time. Sneaking. Looks to be. First yep, blood. our first blood. And about as unfortunate a start as you could possibly have happen if you're Dignitas. You do not want to. We talked about it during the draft. This is not a team that you want to have momentum. And a first blood that quick, that's a little bit of momentum. Yeah, it's it's not so good. I mean, the Chen got it, so it's not the absolute end of the world. If Super got a free bottle, which actually he already does have, so scratch that. Super is going to be able to bottle himself back up, and he's still got three tangos, so all is well. If you're DK, you have the Tinker pretty much farming the safe lane, no problems whatsoever. Probably going to get like six or seven minute boots to travel, something ridiculous like that. And then the fun starts for DK, but the not fun starts for Dignitas. So. Again, if they were able to make it to the mid game without a whole lot of horrible things happening, not saying that that first blood is going to be indicative of the rest of the game, but it's definitely not the start that you want, especially yeah. considering how scary DK is with any momentum with their draft. Burning doing quite well for himself down here in this off lane, getting all the levels he could ask for. They just can't zone him out, and even when they engage, we're about to see it. He's going to take some damage here, but he's going to be able to, to fall back, and mana, the mana pool for Fog on Vengeful is just not very high. He only has so many clarities, so... Trying to force him out, but Burning never even left experience range there in that engagement. That just goes to show you. I mean, and when you, hell, he's even getting some CS. He's got four CS, so he's not going completely broke in gold either. But Wei 2 is going to be making his way through. He is counter warding at the moment, but that's really probably when we'll see Burning begin to be zoned out about the time he anticipates the Enigma will be hitting level, level four, level five with a few more points in the Malefice. But for now, everything relatively quiet up at top. We can see ROTK. 
perhaps wanting to put some pressure on here. Bane has already showed up as well, but the chin, level three and a half. And, I mean, really, when Radiance I look at this, I, it's attack. hard for me to imagine how Dignitas is going to break out of this outside of Way 2. Way 2 is going to be a very important hero whenever he begins to move out of that jungle. He does have a tremendous amount of pressure on him, especially considering this Dignitas safe lane is kind of incapable of pressuring the tower until Way 2 hits 5. Mm -hmm. That's when he's probably going to make the transition over. By that time, I'm sure DK will have already killed the tier 1 top because it's about half health right now. And as you actually mentioned, a huge thing here is that Burning is so low, and he knows that it's a support Vengeful Spirit. You can just rage every magic missile if you really don't want to die. Yep. And there's no way that you're going to die to these heroes unless all three of them come bottom and Way 2 6. That is pretty much the only way they're going to be able to secure burning. And just in terms of overall map efficiency, DK are getting more out of this than Dignitas were in the first place. So I do like the change up for DK's lanes. Leaving burning down here is pretty much no problem. The only thing they can do is go for the early tier 1 to just push him out of the lane using the conversions, which Way 2 is kind of just hovering around here. But I assume he's waiting for the jungle to respawn. So again, Dignitas kind of on the back foot here relatively early. If they can get to the mid game, get the call down, get black hole, make a couple of decent team fights happen. That's that's pretty much their game plan now. DK, looks like they're ready to take control on their own as MMY and QQQ have hooked up, making their way behind the enemy's tier one ROTK is leveling March of the Machines. And you know, that's always an interesting decision. You don't really see the, the Max Rockets, Max Laser build too often. I could see that being what they what the uh, being the decision that DK wanted to make given the how much Radiance offensive potential they have to begin with. But again, just being able to, to see, yeah, there's just nothing at all that Dignitas can do here. And it wouldn't surprise me if DK pushed through to tier two and tried to force a reaction that way. It would be a perfect call because honestly, the more map that you give a Tinker, Radiance the better it's gonna be. And because ROTK has had utter free farm right now and burning, gonna be forced to rage here in the bottom lane, but he's gonna be fine. Again, the more Radiance map you give a Tinker, the better it is. Typically, attack. people don't emphasize off lane towers that much because they give the least amount of map attack. control. But the thing is, if you give a Tinker an inch, he's gonna take a mile. Yep. So for this particular lineup, it's actually more effective for DK to get those towers than it is for Dignitas, just in the sense Dyer's that it creates more space for ROTK. Attack. So. Everything considered, DK is still looking pretty attack. good here. Burning is just kind of menacingly looking at Dignitas bottom, saying, stop hitting my tower. He wants to go for the deny. If he could get it, it would be huge. <laughs> and let's see. No. Nope. Enigma takes the last hit on the tower. We are going to see DK pulling back at least momentarily, waiting on a creep wave. ROTK will be happy to stick his nose further down the lane. Already have the tier two top down to about half health. Let's talk about this mid matchup. Sneaking. Sitting at on near the top of our CS, he's got 28. 20 for Super, though, I feel like is the bigger story there. The Gyrocopter usually is going to be able to do some damage and make life uncomfortable for a DK. He does have... Uh, actually, no, he's not. That's... A, yeah, I guess that's about right. He is maxing Breathe Fire. And, yeah, I, was, I actually expected him to have one more point, probably, in the Dragon's Blood, just because he is up against the Gyro, and Flat Cannon Harassment would, of course, be a pain in the butt. But, as mentioned, he's not really having a hard time deal with, dealing with it. Not only is he getting levels, he's getting gold, and... Uh, so far, everything like, yeah, I think efficiency is the word you used earlier, and it's a, a very appropriate one. We take a look at the gold graph, though, and we're just about dead even. So both teams continuing to slug blow for blow, only one kill on the board. Much more quiet than we saw in game one. This is, even though it's quiet, it's like the calm before the storm. Mm -hmm. DK are eventually going to get to a point where they can just group up, and there's not going to be much that Dignitas can really do about it. Right now, Aoi is just sitting on 1,700 gold. And he's hard-pressed to even know what item to buy, because there's not really any items that I feel outside of a mech that are really going to help his team that much. And he can't even lane against Burning anymore. Like, he was sitting there with Burning, and Burning just runs at him, and now he can't do anything. So, without a support here, this Doom is not really going to be getting much of anything, where Burning is going to be having the time of his life. And the Vengeful Spirit can't really do much either, because, well, without a smoke, it's pretty darn difficult to gank any of these heroes, especially somebody like Super, who's probably going to be the only target that Dignitas can reliably go for here. Going for ROTK would be very, very difficult considering his position. So DK, again, just fantastic decision making so far during the early game. They're still pretty much farming it up. You can see uh, smoke up here, also by DK heading towards mid. And Super, unaware, sneaking, pokes his nose up. There is a ping out. Yep, it looks like sneaking's waiting to pull the trigger. Fog, there it is. Now we're gonna have the nightmares. They re-engage off of it. Sentry Ward went down, and very quickly blown up. The magic damage output just so high between Breathe Fire and everything else. Now we're going to have the net on the way to, caught with another one as well. Three to nothing, just like that. The quiet game, quiet no longer. Bad Rider finishes his Blink Dagger, so that's something 
that Dignitas can look to use the counter initiate with perhaps. Radiance but this attack. middle tower in some trouble. And AUI unwilling to come help is just going to be another tower down. It's deja vu all over again, my friend. Feels Radiance a lot like game one. Same process. The kills just slowly pile up, and DK continues to just knock away and chip down any map control Dignitas has. Their awareness is insane. Like, DK, they see the support lead bottom. They see how passive Aoi is playing, and sure, that could be considered a bait. But the thing is, the Enigma's not even six, so how the heck are they ever gonna kill Burning with a bait like that? They're gonna yep. get the tier one pretty much, no questions asked. DK just knew exactly what Dignitas was gonna do before they even did it, which was try to kill Super, which was, like I mentioned, like 10 seconds before they tried to do it, their only option. Yep. I mean, you could smoke top and go for ROTK, but that's a huge investment. But Universe does have a blank, so let's see if they can get him here. Yep, this is going to be a very important moment. they got to try to turn this around very quickly. And something I was going to point out that is just remarkable to me, Super and Enigma actually did manage to get the kill up there. Universe and Way2 able to put their team on the board that time around. But Super's actually sitting, or excuse me, not Super, Burning, is actually sitting on 27 CS, which is virtually the same as the Enigma, who was left unabated in the jungle. Like, that's just how, how much mileage Burning got out of a solo offlane lifestealer. He's already got up a set of phase boots and 700 gold besides that in the bank. And yeah, this is going to be a situation where Dignitas can't really afford to sit back again. They're, it's just going to be like game one if they do. They're just going to slowly fall behind and then get overwhelmed. I'm kind of feeling the same, unfortunately. And for Dignitas, it's definitely a rough start. This is not really the path that you would want to take. It's a very hard road, especially because this is the very beginning of preliminaries and you're up against DK and we got many people probably would even say they would place higher than top 8. Like DK is just really, really good. So they still have a lot of work cut out for them here in game number 2, see if they can bring it back a little bit. But of course, this is just for seeding, even though it's kind of a morale killer to kind of get housed this badly. And let's be honest, even though it's 1-3, to three, DK have utter control. Oh, yeah. RTK has his blink, but very aggressive bots there. And here we go. They're going to try to pursue him out. Call, wow. Call down spin. That might cost them because now they're going to rotate over. Re-engage. Fog caught with the Dragon Tail. He's going to be blown up with a Brain Sap. Plus a Breathe Fire. Doom off on MMY. That might be enough to force him back. But with the rest of the troops now arriving, they're going to mech through it. Way too throws out a Malefus as he tries to retreat. There's another Dragon Tail that slows him down. Dignitas trying desperately to reposition. AUI going to be caught with the open wounds. Burning chopping away. One net going to seal his fate as he drops once again. And remember what... Uh, <laughs> They're in the draft, some about overwhelm. Yeah, that's how this feels. An utter avalanche of magic damage. Little robot dudes chewing at their ankles in another tower. Gonna be claimed by DK. They've opened the lead up to five to one. And Dignitas on the ropes and begging for air. Radiance middle tower. Losing your tier two mid at ten and a half minutes in, that is such Oh god, it's it's pain. It's like just utter pain right now for Dignitas. They have a tier two top that's gonna be probably probably killed here too, uh, in short order. Chen still has Hand of God. They haven't really had to use anything, and because they have bots on RTK, they can easily push out bottom. So there's not even an opportunity for Dignitas to try to split push. Right. It's kind of just, DK has a lineup that groups up as five, and Dignitas is kind of the same thing. They don't have any split pushers. So basically, if you're losing the five versus five engagements and you're Dignitas, you don't have a plan B. You pretty <laughs> much just, you sit there and you hope that DK make a mistake, which, given their track record so far, and I guess the total, what, 30 to 35 minutes of total gameplay we've seen so far, mm -hmm. not looking too likely. For the top five in net worth, all belonging to DK with Tinker leading the way, the Dragon Knight right behind, and remarkably, the uh, the solo offlane Lifestealer is actually in fourth position, trumping even the Batrider, who was left more or less to his own devices. That just goes to show you what kind of position DK has played themselves into. They're, and they're not done. Then This is what we talked about during uh, the initial draft, just trying to recap and set the scene. DK, a team who used to run a 4 Protect 1, they changed that up, and with that has come so much success, and this is what they're doing now. They know they have a lead, but they're not going to sit on it. They want to get out and shove it in Dignitas' face, moving as an entire team. Check that. One sitting back at base, but it's ROTK, so he's not really back at base. He's anywhere he wants to be at any time, but unable to find a target so far. Fogged hustling back to safety as best he can. So Dignitas at least able to dodge a bullet that time around. A 
really, really fortunate for Falk that he was sitting on the high ground, because if he had been anywhere else, that train would have just ran right over him. So that's a little bit of a good thing for Dignitas. Unfortunately, yes. DK really don't care that their smoke got revealed, <laughs> because they're still going to go for the tier 1 bottom. Yeah. And this is the part where Universe pretty much has to make the play, or they're just going to counter push the mid tier Radiant's 1. The problem with that is, is, is even though you're trading tower for tower, you're still losing more map control, and it looks like Owie might be in a bit of trouble here, but it doesn't look like DK's going to be able to get close enough. So yeah, they, Dignitas finally decide that they do want to defend here, but they're going to have to glyph if they want a shot at defending this tower, and they only have three, so I'm not even sure what the purpose of this is for. That is definite lack of communication. They just TP'd for basically no reason, yep. and they're not even going to get mid. Still sitting at full health. This is just like a complete stop at this point. And DK's not going to stop. Pain Train going to keep rolling straight to the tier two. Fog better hustle, Super. Going to chase him down. And there you go. Caught out. They're going to have to fight. What? Like, what do you even do when you're losing supports like that? She just melted. Like, and now we're going to have a Fiend's Grip on the sneaking. And the follow-up, and he melts as well. AUI next on the list. He's going to be netted down. Way too there. They're going to try to mech through it. Black Hole caught nothing but creeps. And DK just utterly washing over this Dignitas team and making it look easy. It's now 8-1. to one. This is going to be another tower that may as well have not been contested. And the GG is going to come out. So, in a, in a series that, I mean, uh, 33 collective minutes. 33 minutes in total for two games. The time it took for DK to start off their international 2013 run in style and in very, very happy fashion. They rolled two to nothing over Dignitas. And tell you what, man, Dignitas, it, game one, it wasn't that they looked bad necessarily. DK just looked that good. Game two, Dignitas just felt really out of their game. They did not feel like the solid, stable team that prides themselves on communication that we're so accustomed to seeing. And DK just completely punished them for it. I can't really harp on any of DK's movement or anything that they did. Like their draft, it had a clear, concise purpose. And the thing that I really loved about it is, as I mentioned at some point in the game, I think it was like, wasn't even that long in the game, so maybe like seven minutes in or something. It's like when they're pushing into the tier two top, yeah. you have a team that can only do one thing. You don't have any versatility, you don't have a tinker with bots, you don't have anybody who can split push at all. So your only option is to go for team fights and try to go for early game pressure. Well, DK's team did that better and it still had an alternative if it happened to fail because they had two heroes who go insanely late and do very well in the process. So actually three if you want to count Tinker. But yeah, DK, totally dominant performance. They, they won in 20 minutes. They were like, eh, we could probably do better. And then they won in 13. <laughs> 13 minutes, 46 seconds, actually, the official game time. Again, nine kills split one to eight. DK gets things rolling quick, fast, and in a hurry. Starts off their preliminary group stage with a spotless record, two and zero. Oh, our next match coming up, and I'm gonna—I'm not gonna lie—I gotta look it up. It's gonna be Tongfu taking on Orange. That'll be coming up in about 30 minutes uh, if we go by the clock. So a uh, little bit of downtime, guys. Make sure you watch some of the other matches going on. The amazing casting crew that we have assembled for the International. Shiver and company, of course, Toby and Beyond the Summit. So much talent. So make sure you go catch you into one of their matches and hope to see you back again. Our next match of the day, Tongfu taking on Orange coming up in 30 minutes. Stick with us. We'll see you then.